Hejsan! Christian Hedlund heter jag. Jag jobbar normalt som röstskådespelare men jag slösar också med folks tid på internet och det tänkte jag göra nu. Med en liten klassisk stup på, med lite klassisk stup på videon. Även om det inte är den här typen av videos jag gör längre så lite nostalgi kan vi väl slänga in. Och det passar väl väldigt bra i det här spelet. Det heter Nostalgic Train och är, om du har följt mig länge... Då vet du att jag gjorde en serie som hette Barnen har somnat så, eller Barnen har tvn så. Och Barnen har tvn så var ju den lugnare delen av den här kanalen. Och det är lite i det stuket som jag tänkte att vi skulle jobba idag. Varmt välkommen! Har du inte varit på kanalen förut? Kika runt! Eller, ja, du vet ju vad, vad du behöver göra för att stötta de där kreatörerna du tycker om på Youtube. Så ja, jag ska inte behöva instruera dig om det. Det jag vill tacka, det är... Dig, du som är Patreon, för du har fått ett se den här videon för alla andra, men du stöttar också mitt arbete. Och är du intresserad av att veta mer om det, för jag har ju tagit bort Youtube-medlemskapet, det är ut genom fönstret och in med Patreon istället. Vill du veta hur du får tillgång till allt det här gattiga så finns det en länk i beskrivningen. Så Nostalgic Train utspelar sig i Japan och det är på typ 80-talet vad jag förstår och det är en... Walking Simulator med en gömd tågsimulator i. What is not to love? What is not to love? Säger jag. Varmt välkommen. Så det vi kan välja är Free Mode, Story Mode eller Story Mode och sen så har du kontrollen här. Det var lite krångligt för att spelet är på kinesiska och japanska men har fått en engelsk patch som inte applicerar sig själv så att man fick gå in i, i språkmenyn och leta sig fram. Det var spännande, men jag lyckades. Så att vi startar väl ett, en ny story helt enkelt. Um, det här kommer nog bli ganska mysigt. Jag hoppas det i alla fall. Och min tanke är att du kanske kan slå på det här och ha på tvn i bakgrunden medan du, eller på mobilen medan du lagar mat eller någonting. Bara sitta och, och ta det lugnt en stund. Så kryp upp. I ett hörn där du inte gråter i ljuset. Är du småbarnsförälder så vet du precis vilket hörn jag menar. Där man brukar sätta sig i slutet på dagen. Och sen så bara njuter vi, förhoppningsvis. Oh, vad svart det blir. I'm floating within an eternal wrapping of darkness. Oh, ja, det var småbarnslivet det. <laughs> Mellan blöjorna. Men om man inte får den där kärleken, naturligtvis. I'm floating within an eternal wrapping of darkness. This world of obsidian black is, a heavy, is as heavy as the ocean depths. Burned, burned, burdened, 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 with a clinging viscosity. It perresses down relentlessly. A freezing cold trying to crush my skin, my fingers, the insides of my eyes, my everything. And yet, still I must reach up towards the heavens. I must escape from this prison into which I have been cast. But how? Ooh, but it's tungt. I like. Like. Det är gjort i Unreal-motorn där, Unreal 4, så att jag förväntar mig att det ska se vackert ut. It feels like I'm down in a deep slumber. My consciousness seems to be blending into this infinite, 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 skulle jag säga. Infinite vista of light. Det är första gången jag ser det. Ooh, plankorsning! My entire body feels faintly warm. Is this going to be it for me? Is this my eternity? I realize a sound is now reaching, scratching deep inside my ears. The sound of cicadas. To start with, it's uh, to start with, it's only faint and distant. It swells like a wave rushing toward a crescendo before slipping away again. A little longer and it becomes clearer, more pronounced. An image swells up in my mind of trees filled with cicadas, each one desperately chirping away their brief slice of summer. 
In the same moment, warm and humid air bathes my entire body. body. It is unpleasant. It feels clingy, sticky, like being enveloped in syrup. Such a warm and pleasant feeling. Inte hundra på engelska här. No för att jag inte är bäst på engelska. Och det är första gången jag läser. Men det är vissa gånger som poesin känns mer som lost in translation. Men visst. The light is all around me. The light, sorry, det var jag. The light all around me is so brilliant. I can't even open my eyes. Soon, however, I notice dim patches like clouds amid the brilliance. They dampen the light down. I raise my hand to try and block out the sun. This seems to make my surroundings easier to see. I also became more prescient, 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 prescient. I'll just say of my body. I have hands. I have eyes. I have a body. Uh, of course I do. And yet, it still feels like some big revelation. I start to move my arms, bend my fingers and confirm my body. The brilliant white all around me gradually calms down. And it does so, as it does so, my awareness of self and my surroundings sharpens. Gradually, gradually I find focus. Yes, I'm sitting down. Sitting on a hard wooden bench. A vivid orange color has started to spread before my eyes. Above that brilliant strip, there's a dazzling blue sky. A summer sky, spreading as far as the eye can see. I fix my gaze intently on the clouds suspended listlessly against that blue. Then I realize that I'm sitting beneath some kind of roof. I slowly take a moment to look around. I'm still surrounded by the ongoing cacophony of cicadas. A dusty smell fills my nostrils. Uh, the odor of old wooden buildings. I, I know what this place is. An old train station. <laughs> There's even a train stop at the platform. I, I can't see any people. I can't hear any talking. There's no wind and it's like the clouds, the very air around me is pinned in place. The inside of my head starts to throb. If this is a station, was I headed somewhere? If the train is here, maybe that means I just arrived. I regain all of my faculties at last. My surroundings coming into completely... Com my surroundings coming into complete clarity. Complete clarity. Then the ah, no money alternative. My surroundings are coming into complete clarity. It might have just stopped raining because... I see vapor rising from puddles on the ground. What was I doing here? I, I, I really have no idea. I try to remember, to think back. But all I can see is the white-filled world before, from, form, from before, from before? Sorry, we tar den igen, för det var en fin mening. I try to remember, to think back. But all I can see is the white-filled world from before. What happened to me? Why did I suddenly wake up here, of all places? I look at my hands again, still puzzled, wondering if 
I have any possessions with me. No? I don't seem to have anything. My name? Nothing. My, I don't even know that. My family. The house I grew up in. No, nothing comes back. I look down at the pure white one-piece dress I'm wearing. A breeze suddenly blows past me, the air coming alive. The straw hat on my head is almost blown away, but I hold it down with one hand. Just like the sound of the cicada slowly worked its way into my body, now something else is slowly filling my body. A clinging sense of dread. I, I don't know where I live, who I am, even my name. What should I do now? There has to be something. I woke up here, which means I must know this place. I need to look around and try to find a clue, a, a hint, a fragment of anything to jog my memory. If I find people, if I talk to them, I'm sure to find someone who knows me. Something has happened to me, and my memory has become muddled. That, that, that's all. I'll, I'll start by taking a look around the station. Having made that decision, I slowly stand up. Mjuk start. Ooh. Frågan är om jag ska sätta i en handkontroll och styra på det sättet. För det brukar bli lite mjukare när man tittar på en Youtube-video. Ska vi testa? Vi testar. I don't have any recollection of the station name Natsugu, Natsugiri. What? Why did I wake up here? What made me pass out? Okej, okay, det går inte att köra med kontroll. Det är lite halv wonky faktiskt. Uh, så jag kör med mus och tangentbord. Mouse, jump space, crouch. Ja, ah, det känns ganska... Search mode. Search mode. Oh, det finns massor att titta på med andra ord. Oh, okej. Okay. Jag fattar. Kan man ta bort det också? Om jag håller in denna. Jag vill inte ha allting avslöjat. Så, okej. Okay. Det finns massor att t- titta på. Det gör vi. Jag gissar att det står någonting där. <laughs> Men du, det var vackert. Ooh. Kan jag ta någonting? Jag gör så här så jag bara får koll på. Paraplyet kan jag inte göra något. Men här kan jag göra något. There's a public restroom here. No one appears to be using it. And I don't need to either. Okej, så det är en liten hjälp i alla fall. How far do these tracks lead? Väldigt vackert. Behaglig, behaglig ljudkuliss också. Väldigt. Jag vill gå ut dit. Jag vill gå på vad järnväg som kommer. How far do these tracks lead? Ingen tidtabell eller någonting? Ja, titta. Och det var inte många här. Eller? Oh, oj. Should I, stop, stop. Should, I, should I look inside the station a little longer? Yeah, maybe. Oj, nu blev, kom vädret här. Nu blev det dåligt väder. Det känns väldigt drömskt på det sättet. Och där var en loop i ljudet också i syssorna. Vi kollar. The train doors are wide open, but there's no sign of the driver, conductor or any passengers. The train is completely quiet. A slumbering metal giant. Maybe it will get on our way soon. Oh, vad dammigt. Det är dammigt, höll jag på att säga. Vad dimmigt det var. Vad är det som hoppar? Ja, det är saker som poppar i bild. Jag kan inte gå in. Ja, det vore fantastiskt. Men nu regnar det. Nu vill jag absolut inte gå in. Jag tror att 
dynorna poppar, ser du det? Pop, 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 pop. Det var det som fladdrade längst ner. Nej. Oh. Tröket väder. Ja, det känns som att jag ska gå på äventyr. Ja, men titta här kan vi gå in och kika. A small staff room for a small station. It looks like someone has worked. Has working? Has been working here? Måste man säga Has been working here recently. But I can't see anyone now. Trains probably only depart infrequently for such a small station. When the staff are on break, maybe they all go somewhere. I don't think there's anything more for me inside the station. I try he- heading into town. Låt som en bra idé. Then I have a good idea. Stations always have a notice board right outside them. That should have a map and tourist information. There might be something there to trigger my memory. Bra idé. I decide to head outside and take a look. Ingenting här. Speciellt inte för någon som inte pratar vad jag tror är japanska. Och jag vet inte vilken typ av japanska heller. Jag är då... Oh, I should look around. Jo, men jag är på väg. Skylt. Där var någon tidtabell. Men ingen notice här, va? Här kanske. Nej. Här då? Nej. Svårt tolkat. Men det är väldigt vackert. Jag har aldrig varit i Japan. Jag vill åka till Japan. Men jag tror att jag tar storstäderna först. Um, skulle vara... Oh, här var inte mycket. Welcome to Nat- uh, Natsugiri Town. There's a brief dr- description of the town and a map here. Var är, var är kartan? A quiet mountain stream, soothing beach, historical shrine and a spread of nostal- nostalgic countryside scenery. There's some more stuff about the, some old mysterious legends, but overall it seems like a pretty unremarkable countryside town. Is it really where I'm from? I hope I can meet someone someone I know. I look around, but I see no signs of any cars or people. Ah! I turn around and notice something promising. There's a shabby old bookstore across the road, and the door is the door appears to be open. There might be someone inside. I should go over and take a look. Yes, you should. I should. Who should? We should. Oh, gå trappan där borta. Okej, okay, en, en bok, bokaffär. Nej, jag går på övergångsstället. Hoj, hoj. Är någon här? Hallå? Hallå? Hallå! <laughs> I call out a number of times. Projecting my voice to the back of the store. No matter matter the number of times I call, however, I get no sense of anyone actually being here. But no, that's not quite right. The old books are piled up haphazardly on the shelves and in cardboard boxes. The slightest tremble could set set off an avalanche of paper. Constant meaning also. The fan the fan isn't turned on. But there's not much dust. There's a hand towel the owner was probably using, and the calendar has been ripped off recently. It's like someone might appear at any moment, like they could already be standing here. But I still don't hear hear any voices. It's like everyone has just evaporated into thin air. The only sound ringing out is my first footsteps, a fact that only makes me feel even more alone. I narrow my eyes to take in the interior and strain my ears to hear. There are posters here for things like the Natsugiri floating lanterns event and the summer festival. Maybe all the townsfolk are off getting ready for that. That thought helps me calm down a little bit. Calm down a little bit. A book catches my eye and I flip through the pages. 
It almost feels like I'm just killing some time with a little free reading while I wait for my train. I almost expect the book, old bookstore owner to nonchalantly show up, grumbling about the, uh, this not being a library. And then more passengers for the train would appear too, and this coincidental moment of abnormal silence would shatter into safety. I can make it through this, I'm sure. I can beat back the anxiety growing inside of me. I take a moment to keep the tears from spilling from my eyes. I look over the titles of the books and magazines. One magazine catches my eye, with a feature article called Spirited Away in Natsugiri. Nodge, nodge, nodge. Det vill ringa någon. Åh, oh, det här är kids. Kan ni googla? Det är en telefonkiosk. <laughs> ah, jag kommer ihåg både mynten och telefonkorten. Men på min tid hade de dörrar. Ja, men den hade en dörr där. På min tid hade den dörrar. Bil i alla fall. Vi går till järnvägsövergången. Coffee? Nej. No. No coffee today. More coffee, huh? Så nära pubg vi kommer. Wow. Trehjulingsbilar alltså. There's no... Oh, there's nothing to do in this direction at the moment. At the moment you say. At the moment you say. Det är väldigt skyddad verkstad när det gäller till vad man får gå någonstans. Den vill berätta en historia på sitt sätt, vilket jag kan uppskatta. Lugnt och skönt. Ska vi gå in bakom butiken och se om det är någon här inne? There's nothing for me in this this direction at the moment. Okay. Det finns ju ett free mode också. Jag kanske skulle ha provat det och bara gå runt i stället. Men jag ville veta vad den här... Gör så här då. Se vad den säger. Bad jag den peka ut viktiga positioner på kartan. Där fanns inget. Och då var ingenting kvar inne i bokaffären. Nej. Då går vi tillbaka då. Det här är ju en bil. Så att det inte fanns någon bil här. En till i alla fall. Vi springer. Wow, jag fattar ingenting av det där. Får vi åka tång? Där borta var ingenting. Kan man åka tåget? Ja. Jag går dit då. Oh. Nej, det fick jag inte. Åh oh, nej, oh, jag var förlåt. Märkligt när man går åt... Jag försöker ju hitta liksom vart, jag, vart är vi är på väg. Och så blir man stoppad så här. Det är lite... Så det kan jag tycka är frustrerande. Då kan, tycker jag, jag förstår att de vill berätta en historia, men... Det blir extremt konstigt när jag försöker att utforska det här stället. Och... Okej, okay, det var mer här, helt enkelt. The magazine seems to handle mysterious happenings and strange legends from around the world. There are some pretty bizarre articles, including about, about water goblins in Europe and incantations to change a person's faith. The pages. Pages are all yellow and look ready to fall apart. Someone must have picked it up because of the article about their hometown, eventually leading it to this graveyard for print. I used the contents, contents page to find the article on Natsugiri and start to read it. At a glance, we ska vi ta på brittisk engelska så bästa alltså det värsta jag kan men eller bästa. Ja, oh, spare bear with me. Spare with me. Ja, oh, budget brittisk. At a glance. Natsurigi seems like any normal countryside town. 
but dig a little deeper to find persistent legends of people suddenly vanishing. While researching this article, we talked with the former principal of Natsugiri Elementary School, whose wishes, who wishes to remain anonymous, but is also a local historian who has tracked these legends himself. Let to vara i en sån liten by, jätteanonym. Han är en lokal historiker. Bara, vem utav dem kan det vara? <laughs> the legends of vanishings from Natsugiri, he told us, date back to when defeated soldiers first settled here during the Genpei period. Förlåt för slakten. Ja, förmodligen det, det, det ordet. Children, old folks, adults and even entire families can just vanish one day and never come back. People say they were taken by bandits or fell into the river, but what they really whisper about, what they really think is that the mysterious powers present in this place are to blame. Even today, parents still tell their children that they need to behave or they might be spirited away. Roll credits, uh, Studio Ghibli. Or they might say, Treat your parents right, treasure your friends, or even or, ev- or everyone you care for might be spirited away instead of you. Do you want to be all alone, eh? Do you? What's even more interesting is that if one of the vanished gets very lucky, they can actually they actually can come back. A traveller at the end of the Edo period was passing passing through the town and apparently met with just such a vanishing. He vanished, but then, not long afterward, he also came back. There's a record of his event from the start of the Meiji period. Of course, there's no way to confirm the truth of it today. The records state that the traveller was suddenly enveloped in a bright white light and then awoke, his memories gone, in this village. But with no one else here... But with no one else here. When he awoke, he didn't even know who he was. He had no memory of even coming even coming to this place. Ooh! There were fires in the fire pits and tools out in the fields, like people just had been there, but he was unable to see a single soul, unable to find anyone at all. He desperately searched the the deserted village for any clues to get back to the real world. This is purely conjecture on my part, part, dear reader, but it sounds like these vanishings in Natsugiri involve individuals somehow finding their way into an overlapping parallel parallel dimension where they can share the same space as other people but not see them. (laughs) In any case, the former... Former principal continued his story. The traveller desperately searched for a way back to the world he came from. After walking the entire village from corner to corner, pillar to post, he happened to notice a faintly shining object. Something down on the ground was glowing like a ball of light. He gingerly reached out for it. For it? And when his fingers made contact with, made contact, he saw glimpses of someone in the real world. Memories and feelings connected to that person flowed into him. This part is pretty vague, but it seems that touching something and imparting a strong intent into it allows some kind of message to be transmitted to the real world, triggering some, some, someone on that side to also remember the person who has vanished. The truly frightening thing here is that just as the one who vanishes loses their memory, the people in the real world also rapidly start to lose their memories of the person who has vanished. So it was through the use of an item, some media that connected the two worlds, that they remembered each other. In the blink of an eye, the traveller was back in his original world. Like he had never vanished at all. The world just blinked around him, and before he knew it, he was standing on a hill by the river. 
right around where Natsugiri Elementary School now stands. And that's where the records end. After the account from the principal, the author of the article goes on... Ah, oh, after the account of the principal, the author of the article goes on to provide his own theories. There's also a selection of illustrations and photos intended to more to, to more to perturb the reader than elucidate him them i hardly even see the image anyway surrounded in a white light not even knowing where you are a chill cascades down my entire body my legs are trembling preventing me from moving when i started reading i i thought the people of the town were the ones who had vanished but now it sounds more like I'm the one who has been whisked away from my original world. This all seems to be similar, too similar to be a coincidence. But is such thing really possible? It could be some elaborate, well put together prank, or I must just be having some kind of extended dream. That still sounds more likely to me. I feel sweat running down my back. I blink my eyes over and over to see if that makes a difference. Thinking how stupid this is, I, I take my cheek and arm and pinch them hard. Not only do I fail to awaken, but the pain in my cheek and fingers, they, the clammy feeling on my skin, the nail marks left on my arm, all of those things only heighten the feeling of reality around me. The person from the past in this article made it back. That means I still have a chance. On the re reverse of that, however, there might also have been people who were completely forgotten and vanished forever. Could I maybe meet people like that in this world? Or have I been cast into my own solitary world with no one else here at all? Am I fated to vanish without any idea who, of who I am? With everyone who knows me also forgetting my existence? Gripped by that fear, I vow to somehow get myself back. I remember the article. The traveler returned in the area around the grounds of the elementary school. If I go over there, I might find further clues. I look around. Then I recall the map on the station notice board. The elementary school should be up the hill after turning right from leaving the bookstore. I should head in that direction, while keeping an eye out all around me. Those white sparkles I've been seeing seem to suggest a link be between this world and the one I've left behind. They also seem to be the only clues I'm going to get at the moment. I need to head to the school. Okej. Okay. Tycker om det här äventyret. Um, ja, fast du, det, det blir... Jag, försö jag försöker så gott jag kan att få fram en stämning genom ett manus som jag aldrig har läst förut. Men, men jag hoppas jag lyckas någorlunda i alla fall. Idén är ju jättemysig. Det är bara att hova in. <laughs> It says cafe only below the name. I can't see any customers and can't tell and smell any coffee either. Nej, det ser dött ut. Är det här skolan? Ska vi se om vi gör så här då. Få se. Där har vi. Oj, det är mycket brickar. Där. Där, där. Oj, 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 oj. Oj, 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 oj. It says that this shrine was... Där har du. Resultatet av... Ibland dyker det upp. Jag hade eh, eh, tandställning under två år i typ 16-årsåldern. Och där... Hade du resultatet av det? Ibland. Så visslar det till. It says that this shrine was built during the Kamakura period. 
The people who moved the, to this area during that time experienced various disasters and strange phenomena and created this shrine in order to quell the powers responsible. Ooh. Åh, oh, mysigt. En uh, lågstadieskola där ingen är. Alltså inte mer. Ja, där. Wow, det var väldigt specifikt där. This is the elementary school. I can see a light from the direction of the school itself. I should head towards there. Tor- toward it. Jag kan känna att det är lite missa att jag måste vara så precis på dem där. Om man vill göra en sån här berättelse utan att ha de här små plupparna så hade det varit bättre att bara ha tydligare markeringar så att det inte gick att missa. Men det är jag det. Jag är inte speldesigner. Jag är bara spelupplevare. Är det en gammal järn? Nej, vad är... är det där en järnvägsbro? Hmm. Det är ingenting mer att hitta på gården här. Det verkar ju låst. Låst. Jag går bakom. Nej. Jag går upp här då. Oh. Nej. Lite för flaskhalsat för mig. Där borta är det någonting. I reach out for a life preserver, half buried, half hidden in the school grass. Maybe a child playing down on the riverbed forgot to take it home. It's semi se- semi deflated and would normally be easily overlooked. But it's also glowing with a mysterious light, and I sense instinctively, instinctively, instinctually, instinctually. Can I say that? So instinctively, say man. The that well. Lost in translation. Instinctually. Kan man säga det? Googla det åt mig och svara i kommentaren. <laughs> That is, has some connection with the real world. My fingers touch it. The instant they do, a wave of white light washes over my entire body. Everything instantly turns completely white. I hear people talking, distant. Their voices warped. Is this the other world I'm seeing? A, a scene from the real world? It, it doesn't feel real to me, though. It, my body isn't there. I reach out with my arms, but there's no reaction. The scenery smells, sounds, and memories of people. Everything is flowing into me from the life preserver in my hands. The sounds of river rushing loudly. Also, the river? Just a moment ago, the river was flowing peacefully alongside the school grounds. Now, the water changes into a mud-mixed brown and sweeps by in a vicious torrent. The air is thick with the smell of moisture. The sky is covered with rolling black clouds. There's almost no rain actually falling, but the ground is little more than a mudslide. It seems heavy rain has caused the river to rapidly rise. Help! I hear the cry, so faint, almost completely drowned out by the churning of the water. Up river, close to the base of the falls, I see a small black head bobbing up and down amid the riding brown... Writhing! Writhing? Brown torrent. The child can't have long left, being swept along at an incredible speed. In the next instant, right at my side, I hear small footfalls desperately splashing toward me through the mud. A boy who happened to be in the school grounds has noticed the imminent tragedy and comes running over. He's, he fixes his eyes on the drowning child, but for a few moments more, the second child still does nothing, seemingly frozen in place. I can see his legs and lips trembling ever so slightly. His eyes are open wide, are wide open, but he doesn't know what to do, and seems unable to do anything other than 
Watch the child drown. This muddy torrent is no place for another child, after all. He won't be able to make a difference even if it does jump in. The child shakes his head a few times, trying to push down his fear. Then he looks around. He finds a life preserver on the side of the school grounds. Maybe forgotten by someone. Maybe blown here by the wind. It's the same object that I'm holding. What I'm seeing here is a memory of this world as it relates to this life preserver. The Shied thinks for a moment longer, but then he makes his decision. Dashing forward with the life preserver in hand, he slips down the bank toward the river. If, even if he can't swim, even with all the mud, the, that preserver should keep him from drowning. That preserver should allow him to save the child. Maybe that's what he's thinking. He slides down the river bank from the school grounds and leaps into the brown water. But the volume of water is just too great, and its surface too rolling. Both children are tossed like dry leaves. They bob up, then they sink down again, and with no sign of them drawing closer together. It only takes moments for, for them both to be swept away downstream. If they reach the ocean, they're there's surely no hope for them to be saved. At the bridge downstream, adults have noticed the drowning children and are starting a commotion. It starts with a woman on the bridge, and she sends up a cry. She, she might be the mother of the first of the drowning children. She calls a name over and over, crouch, crouching down while clutching her head. Then I see a second adult, a man, rushing over the, to the bridge. He has a hat and a nightstick, allowing me to identify him as a policeman. He gives his hat to the woman, then he jumps over the bridge railing and into the water. He's, he, he begins to the same bobbing and sinking, and for a moment I think the mud slide, slide will take him too, but he doesn't let his wet, clinging clothing hold him back, and he gradually takes command of the mud. While struggling through the current, and he makes progress towards the first of the drowning children. In, moment, in moments, he has grabbed the child firmly with his arm, and then starts swimming back towards the bank. It all happened so quickly. I search, I search, I search around desperately for the other boy who jumped in. Even with the life preserver, he's completely unable to exert any control. Just when I think he's in the clear, his body gets, gets he, his body is smashed into a rock, and his head takes the hard rock knock. The life preserver slips completely off his body, and he vanishes into the torrent of mud. All this happens in the same moment the policeman reaches the bank with the first child. All the intentions of the adults is fix, fixed on that boy, and the first one who fell into the water. Everyone runs over to him. Everyone is worried about him. I search again for the boy who, boy who is still in the water, hoping for him to rise up again. By now, he's well past the, lo the location of the policeman. He looks like nothing more than a scrap of tattered clothing far away in the mud. He is washed out to sea without anyone noticing. The memories that followed these events also flow into me, and night falls. Without anyone realizing the second boy jumped into the river, and without realizing he failed in the attempt, the villagers are caught up in taking the first child to the hospital, and shoring up the damage to the roads caused by the landslides. It takes more than half a day for the adults to realize another child is missing. The full-scale search only begins after darkness falls, the clouds clearing and a cold moon shining down. Time continues its resolute, regulated march, with no signs of the boy. No one saw him drown, after all. The morning light beautifully illuminates the village, and the people start to murmur about another vanishing. When his cold body is finally discovered, washed up on the beach. Oh, 
That's too much. My eyes burn with sadness. I squeeze my eyelids tightly and then look up. I find myself looking at the same quiet river that was originally here. I'm back in my empty, private world. Everything I just saw was a memory of the real world, transmitted through the life preserver. I can't see anyone in this world would, uh, world I've ever wandered, in, wandered into, but I can witness scenes from my original world by contact with objects strongly tied to memories of that place. I look intently at the life preserver in my hand. The magazine article said that finding something which connects to the two worlds is the key to returning home. This life preserver could be the one could be one such link to the real world. But it's also the reason why such a terrible thing happened to that boy. Even if he hadn't jumped in, the first boy would have still been saved. Even if he hadn't jumped in, the first boy would still have been saved. I wonder if he can't stop the boy from acting. If I, want, if I can't stop the boy from acting, and so prevent this tragi tragedy from ever occurring. By, for example, hiding this life preserver. Ooh, so how are you Hello? I hear a sound, mixed in with the wind and the river. Something I haven't heard and here until now. A man-made noise. The sound of the railway crossing. This is the first sign that I've, a sign I've had of anything working. Does this mean the train is running now? It might provide a way for me to get back home. With the life preserver still in my hands, I decide to head back to the station. Okay. Det blev väldigt mycket tyngre än vad jag hade förväntat mig. Inte mindre fantastiskt, men väldigt speciellt. Men det är också så här, det är inte direkt ett spel på det sättet utan det är ju mer en upplevelse. Det blir ju mer som en bok. För mig blir det just nu en upplevelse, en video och lite manusläsningsövning. Men, men jag hade nog hellre vilja se någonting ske i en interaktiv upplevelse än att läsa mig igenom det. But sure. Samtidigt så, så det blir det enastående, ett enastående sätt att levande göra den här platsen. Man ser liksom, okej, okay, det var här det hände. Vilket är fantastiskt på det sättet. Med ordets styrka. Men... Vi tar oss ner till järnvägsövergången och tåget och ser vad som händer. För jag vet att det ska gå och köra tåget. Så kanske måste vi hoppa till free mode. Men vi måste dit. Men järnvägsövergången låter ju inte. Eller? Tåget låter som att det låter. Lugnt och va? Wa! Wa! Se wa! Åka japanskt 80 tals då. Nu har jag något. Ooh. I love it. Okej, okay, vad innebär det här då? Här borta var någonting, eller hur? Vad var det någonstans då? Det är så sjukt specifikt. Oj då, vad händer? Oop. Sjukt specifikt. Där borta. I had hoped someone might be here. And that I might have returned to my own world. But the place is as deserted as before. There's still no staff and no people waiting for the train, but the crossing continues to shine and the doors to the train stand open. They seem to be inviting me inside, ready to depart at any moment. I like this. I like this a lot. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. With a life preserver in my hand, 
I board the train as I thought inevitably. The train as though inevitably sucked inside. Ooh. Glad med en bra fönsterplats. Ja, 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 jag saknar ord. Jag bara njuter. Butch! Looks like we're back in the car again. But not as dirty now, Borta. He would have. I wonder what kind of strange the development this is. Without anyone else showing their face, the train started up like magic and then returned to the same station from which which it departed. There still isn't anyone here. I hear the waves in the distance, the unchanging chorus of the cicadas. I suddenly feel pain in my fingers. I'm gripping the life preserver so hard that it, my hand feels cold. The joints in my fingers highlight and white. I look around. Everything is still so quiet. But something I can't exactly explain, something about the air of the place, also feels very different. Is this the same world as before? It almost feels like the train has taken me to a new one, seemingly identical to the last one, but also different in some vital ways. Way. Vital way. I'm drawn out of the train and back towards the school. Ja, I'm intrigued. Och skulle du vilja att jag fortsätter att spela det här i en annan video så så säg gärna till men Om det inte blir av så måste vi ha provat att köra tåget. Så därför tänker jag testa om det går att göra i free mode. Welcome to free mode. This is a mode where you, can free, where you are free to explore the world and even ride the train. God damn it. Control can be confirmed at any time. Ah ja, okej. Så jag kan... Oh! Kan jag köra tåget? Switch. <gasps> Okay. This is good enough. This is good enough. <laughs> Ser man tåget? Nej, det gör jag inte. Okej, okay, då vinklar jag kameran upp så du bara kan njuta av åkturen.
Åh, oh, älskade bommen som boom, liksom studsade. Jag måste gå över järnvägsövergången också innan vi avslutar det här. Okej, det är inte en tågsimulator på det sättet, det kan vi ju slå fast. Men det var inte en tråkig liten runda. Alltså, ett, ett, ett tåg i spel är aldrig fel. Det är, oj, det där har du någonting att skriva, skriva över. Åh, oh, är det någon sån här lappar? Vi ska inte titta på dem nu. Där har du någonting att brodera och sätta om man för dun. Ett tåg i spel är aldrig fel. Nu är det. <laughs> Mm. Jag har gjort en hel, hel, hel video om tåget. Oj! Det här blev det perfekta stället att avsluta. Eller hur? Tack så mycket för att du kollade. Stort tack till mina Patreons. Youtube-medlemskapet är borta. Patreon är det som gäller nu. Och tycker du att det jag håller på med på Youtube är värt att följa. Då får du hemskt gärna göra det. Och hjälpa mig att fortsätta med det här arbetet. Enormt tack för att du tittade också. Må så gott. Bommarna gick upp lite tidigt. Hej då.